name is Carlo Cadet. I'm with Perfecto Mobile. I have the joy and the responsibility of uh, leading the product marketing team for the organization as well as being a member of the product strategy team. I'm joined by my colleague Uzi, who's a member of the CTO office. Today, I think we're going to talk about a, a fairly simple message, which is, yes, you can. Which is, yes, you could insert real devices in your build automation process and run it at scale and run it as fast as possible. That's what we're going to cover today. We're going to, um, we're really going to talk about two, two parts in the presentation. I'll talk a little bit, and then Uzi will show a demo in terms of going over some of the challenges that we see, and then hopefully as well as to get a, uh, a bit of audience and interaction to understand who you are, and so we, therefore we kind of tailor our comments. We're just going to do uh, a quick show of hands, if you will. If uh, I really appreciate audience participation. It really makes giving these talks quite a bit easier, so I would ask for your help. Um, as much as you're, you're willing, and I appreciate that. How many people are doing mobile projects today and using, all right, show mobile projects today? Great, 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 great. Keep your hands up, keep your hands up. How many of you are using real devices in your CI builds? Wow. Okay, awesome. Next question. So, of those hands that were up, for those people who are using real devices in your CI processes, how satisfied are you with kind of where you are? Give yourself a report card. For those people who are not really satisfied with kind of how the process is working, show of hands. Be brave if, if you think you could score yourself harshly. Okay, most, that's good. How many of you are somewhat satisfied with the, what you have going on? Okay, and really, and getting it, and you guys, how many of you think you're getting the job done? With, all right, you two gentlemen, if you could stand up for a quick second. No, it's good, no, for real, for real. Give, stand up, go ahead, stand up, the two of you. The rest of you guys, give them a hand clap. Because obviously, the two of you know something that the rest of these guys and gals might not have learned yet. And the last question? All right. So for those people who have been doing and are not one of those two gentlemen, that means there's something in the way. There is something in the way of getting your CI builds to run as fast as you want, plus using real devices. So if anyone's brave and they could share, I'd really appreciate it. What's holding you back from using real device to, to being very satisfied with how you're doing it? So for those people who are doing it, yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So just the, the, the comment back, the, the, the challenge that was holding this gentleman back was simply the quantity of devices, meaning you could probably get the job done with maybe one, two, but if we go to 20, not going to work. All right. Thank you. Sorry? Okay. Device diversity. Okay. Unreliable. The devices are unreliable. Your process. Okay. Yes. 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 Yep. Okay. Any anything else from this side of the room? Okay. I think we've uh, touched on a number of them. Go ahead. I want to talk about a, a, a quick story over the past weekend. So uh, I'm, I'm a customer of a, a bank, USAA. If any of you heard of it, you're, you're probably familiar with kind of who they are. The one thing to know from a mobile business, from a mobile perspective, they are probably the, the leading edge of innovation in mobile banking globally, I, I would argue. And I had an experience. I, I've been using remote check capture since they introduced it. They were the first bank to introduce uh, remote check capture. And over the weekend, I was depositing two checks. And I noticed during the deposits that they had included a share function. 
that I was able to, when I deposited the checks, which were for actually both of my daughters, one for each of my daughters, I was able to immediately send a text, Daddy deposited your money. The thing about that story is that it's a classic example of what's going on right now. That was a very, very small feature that they introduced. It was very useful to me, and it actually delighted me. And it's going what's going on right now for, for businesses, I think, or enterprises of all types. They are actually trying to change their business model to take advantage of the unique characteristics of mobile. And that's forcing, I think, the major change that has led to so many people here today in terms of what's going on is people need to accelerate their software development life cycles. And the strategies that people are taking, obviously, that you're all familiar with, delivering smaller increments faster. And oh, by the way, they need to work. And oh, by the way, mobile is a little different than web. Next slide. There's a, there's a curve that, as I talk to our customers, and for those of you who are not as familiar with Perfecto Mobile, we have about 1,000 customers, some of the, uh, the largest enterprises uh, in, in the globe, uh, you know, with pretty strong, strong uh, presence with uh, banking and across financial services and across others. And we realize something, that in this shift that's going on, however you want to describe it, agile, iterative, et cetera, but SDLC processes are changing. And they're changing because people are trying to make a, a balance between accelerating their delivery and lowering risk at the same time. And what's clear is that there are several enablers to that process. Everyone's already familiar with kind of the automation piece and the CI piece. One of the things that goes back to the first poll question is that given that mobile is different, one of the clear things, and it's unique, it's definitely for mobile and other aspects as well in terms of for other types of projects, having a test-ready lab is critical. Having a reliable, always on, always ready lab is critical. It's one of those things that I can almost say to you that for most organizations, you can't get there from here without it. You can't get there from here without it. Next slide. So, always ready, always on lab. I, I think if anyone's delivering a mobile project, they already know this answer. For others in the audience, you might not know it. But if you're doing a mobile project, I want to let you know that emulators suck. And, and, and they, suck for, they, they suck for a real simple reason, is that they're different than real devices. They're simply different on a lot of, on a lot of elements. You know, I, uh, there may, anyone from Apple in the room? I know they're here at the show. OK, hey, Joe, how are you doing? So I, I, I pick on Apple. Um, Apple has a simulator, not an emulator, so it's, it's important to, to know it. But they don't even use the same instruction set in their devices in their simulator. And all the, the only thing I'm pointing out is that it's different. And if the objective of accelerating your delivery is based on fast feedback, I would suggest reliable feedback is important. And therefore, part of that lab that I've been talking about, it needs to be a production replica. And when you actually start unpacking, uh, unpacking this, you start realizing that that daylight can cause false positives between what an emulator would return versus what a real device would return. And if you want actionable insight, you, you just got to get as close to a production replica as possible. Production replica is not only real devices, but it's really what the gentleman in the back said as well. It's the diversity of devices that are absolutely required. And, and I'll get into some numbers later. Next slide, please. So this lab thing, there are seven properties that, that become kind of a litmus test for what works for a lab. Number two is probably the key aspect that I would speak to. And I think the gentleman who, 
who made the comment about reliability. Is, it touches on an important nerve because uh, <laughs> compared to a, a blade server, a real device, keep in mind, is a consumer thing. It's a fancy computer in a small package that sometimes bends, OK? And, and, and sometimes isn't always reliable. And if you're going to move fast, this is where that reliability piece kicks in. And these really become litmus tests for what works. Another aspect for a, fun, a, a lab that we believe that could deliver continuous quality, it, it's got to adapt to your SDLC. Not creating an, a, a net new silo in your organization, but rather, if you're a Selenium shop, amen. Go ahead, use Selenium, right? If you're going to run Ruby on Rails, great. Run Ruby on Rails. If, if you're going to use any of the various frameworks, or for those of you who are using commercial, uh, what I'd call the commercial ALM frameworks, kind of the IBMs, HPs, et cetera, or, or Visual Studio, great. Use that. It's got to adapt to your workflow, because that's the way to get time to value quickly. And that's the way to kind of minimize the disruption of bringing in that new tool. Another aspect is it, it's got to support various use cases. It's, the lab has to accommodate the diversity of use cases. Uh, for those, how many of you guys were here with yesterday in the CD Summit, the continuous delivery? So I'll make just one correction comment that was stated yesterday. There was a question of, can you shake can you shake the phone? The answer is, from an accelerometer testing, the answer is yes. You're just not going to do that particular test in the cloud. What you want to do is be able to have that device that is now USB tethered being able to be part of your cloud, as an example. You want to be able to run your resource pool and make it available across your various testing conditions. And that's why, for example, on number six, where we call it a hybrid model, is that while we provide a, a cloud-based model, which is private devices that are dedicated to one organization. That's just not, the, it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. And in fact, therefore, there are various use cases that would suggest that one, private dedicated is a great answer. Okay, public shared is a great answer for a burst capability. Desktop connected, that's also great if you want to do accelerometer testing or any of the tethered device scenarios. And so think of these as, as kind of the, the litmus test for what a lab needs to be. Next. Readiness, I think, is the fundamental Achilles heel. How many of you are running in-house device labs? Just show of hands. OK, a few guys. This isn't what I would call a nice picture, a nice picture. I, I, I talk to organizations where they have 95 devices thrown across in three, four different locations. And it's someone's part-time job, you know, i.e. some developer or some quality engineer is responsible for knowing that Sally has the, the iPad 2 running I, uh, iOS 7, right? And that becomes really unsustainable. It's really just hard, right? Oh, by the way, that's that same device we, we thought it wasn't upgraded because, oh, by the way, once you roll it forward, you can't roll it backwards. So now you're in a, in a situation, now I got to get an old device, probably off of eBay, to replace it, right? And, and it's, just, it's just tough. It, it, it's, it's a tough problem. And for those who, have, who recognize that, you then start saying to yourself, there's got to be a better way. There's just fundamentally got to be a better way. Turning corners a little bit, for, for, for those of you who are, are well into your CI program, and particularly those two gentlemen who said that their program works pretty well, perhaps you could share some comments uh, if, if you're so inclined. But the way we look at it is that as you think about your program, uh, as you think about the builds, we think about it in a phased perspective. And therefore, what you're doing kind of once a day versus what you're doing nightly versus what you're doing weekly is actually different. And there, it, it will change on two dimensions in particular. Right? Well, three dimensions, I should say. The duration, right? 
that per commit or hourly, that's probably less than an hour. And you, you might want to use a couple real devices in that process and do a quick smoke test. As you move over to your, your nightly job, you really have to think about how should my test scope change? Perhaps now is the time to be doing a quick load test with 5, 10, 50 virtual users to understand what's going on? Or should I also be trying to change my network conditions now, every night, to understand how's my baseline changing for my application? For my weekly tests that might run, I don't know, 5, 10, 24 hours, 48 hours in duration, what's the right scope? What's the right set of devices to be utilizing? And, and the key message is the more that is outside of that scope, that's killing your velocity. The more you leave, the more that you, is outside of this scope, it's killing your velocity. It's just drag. And it's drag from the perspective of its residual risk. It's just stuff you don't know about until you do that task. And you've said, I'm going to do it later, and therefore you're going to find out about it later. And therefore, when you start thinking about how, how long is a, is a defect alive in your code, you've extended it. Right? I'm not, I'm not uh, deluding myself or, or, or trying to pretend that you're going to achieve 100% in that process. I'm not saying that. But it's one of those things that must be ratcheted down as small as possible because it's the enemy of velocity. Does that make sense? OK. So th those two gentlemen who said they got their, their CI processes are working really well with real devices. How many devices are you using? I'll just say at, in your last test, because I'll assume that's your most devices. How many are you using? You, you're using 15, and there's a, and a what? I uh, we develop a library for that. OK. So it's a subset of the problem. Got it. Oh, all right. And the gentleman in the back who, who said their pro program is working well? Uh, anywhere from 15 to 30. Anywhere from 15 to 30, and you're flexing to the 30 probably for UAT? Right. Got it. The, the fundamental thing is also connecting to your own, uh, your own traffic analysis, right? As you make those decisions, it's, it's, it's probably not wise just to think what's popular. Rather, you have to take a look what I suggested, two lenses. One is, what's the traffic? Everyone's using some sort of Google Analytics on your website, right, or in the back end, or, or web trends or something. That's data. Put it to use. But then, also be very, be very attentive of what's coming. Right? We just went through uh, a couple weeks ago with the introduction of 6 and 6 plus. Those have got to be put into inventory immediately. Because the uptake rate, you got to be loved to be in Apple's business. The uptake rate of those devices is incredible. Right? In terms of A, the 6 and 6 plus, as well as iOS 8. Right, when you have half of your base rotating in 48 hours, right, that's incredible. We work with enterprise customers, and I will tell you, and, and some of you are, are in the same boat, that's a, that's a very unhappy moment as you are wading through those betas and trying to get ahead of it before it simply happens to you. Right? Some of you, anyone from Bank of America in the room? So I think, for example, one of the tipping points that's going on in the industry right now is Apple Pay. If you're Bank of America, you're really scratching your head hard right now because they just got hit with the, the problem Citibank got hit with several years back with overcharges, right? You have your system of engagement up front, your devices and your back end, you're trying to connect those things with a brand new technology called Apple Pay. And they're scrambling right now to fix a quality problem. You've got to keep up and it's hard. And the CI strategy is absolutely the right strategy. And so therefore, it's really balancing that scope and going back to that first slide that I had, or earlier slide with the arc, with being able to squeeze out risk 
by improving your process, improving your coverage at the same time, automating the process, automating your testing, and taking smaller bite sizes when all of a sudden you're doing something that's impactful to customers like me of just introducing the share function, right? What you see on the slide is that, you know, and, and this is not a, what I'd call prescriptive, but more so suggestive, right? You have to figure out what's working locally, but at the same time, you've got to do more each increment. That's the key message of this slide. And that's what gets you out into a scenario where you're testing on 30, if not more, devices on that last cycle. And you're really hard on yourselves from the perspective of not being satisfied with simply functional test and recognizing that non-functional test has got to be pulled into the, into the process. Performance is the second most common complaint users have, right? It's UI first, performance second, and functionality third, right? Because if the UI sucks, I download and abandon. That's just what happens, and it's near immediate. I'm sure if I asked for a show of hands, you guys would, would quickly say, oh yeah, I tried something, I didn't like it, and that was the last time I used it. That's just the reality. If performance sucks, the next problem happens is that they get frustrated and then the next immediate action is tweeting. And from a tweeting perspective, if there's a sufficient volume for an enterprise that's being tweeted against for bad performance, it's picked up by the news. I can't tell you how many customers I've talked to that in their knock, they staff a 24 by seven social media team just to watch negative tweets so they can get an alert of what's going on in their own applications in the field. Can anyone raise their hand and say my organization does that? Okay, we have two in the room. I'm not making it up. We're talking about global banks do this. It's a common practice because they have vis the visibility that they have into their apps in production and the third party CDN rely uh, reliance on third parties as part of their content delivery chain is hard. And that's what, that's what makes the argument for this. You've got to pull that stuff left, functional and non-functional. Pull it left. Thank you, Carlo. So, start with, can you hear me? Yeah, well, you. So, what I want to do now is actually to show you and to explain everything that Carlo just described. What Perfecto Mobile believe? What is the right solution? How can we use the lab? And how they, can we use the real device and create a process that actually works? So before the real demo, I just want to talk a little bit about our lab. Remember the picture of all the devices in the uh, Carlos slide? This is how a lab should be, uh, look like. This is Perfecto Mobile Lab. And what you can see here, that yes, we have the lab. We have all the devices. All the devices are available. All the devices ready to use. iOS 8. Uh, iPhone 6 released to the market, 90, sec 90 minutes after that, it was in our cloud. And regarding all the processes, all the tools, we understand that your organization, your culture has its own tools, has its own processes. And we cannot change the processes in order to use our tool. So we have a very strong layer of APIs. And on top of these API layers, you can execute and run your existing tool. So if you are using automation with Selenium and Appium, just change the driver, remote web driver, run it across the, the lab. If you are using UD, uh, UFT, just change the driver. Use it with real devices across the lab. That's the idea. Keep your processes. If you are running a build with Jenkins, Maven, TestNG, continue to do it. And this is what I want you to see today the flexibility, and you will be able to use everything that you have today and run it in front of this lab. And this is the lab that you are looking for if you want a stable process. So what we're going to see today, so going to be a, a live demo. We are going to uh, give you a quick interview, uh, introduction, to, introduction to the continuous, uh, continuous quality lab. 
And then we are going to see some automation. How many of you actually running automation today? Oh, that's nice. How many use uh, Selenium? How many use uh, Calabash? OK. How many use Appium? Beautiful. OK. And then, because we are talking about building processes, I would like to show you the end-to-end -end process, how to run it, how to define the devices, and how to get the results after that. While we transition to the demo, any quick questions? Yes, sir. Short answer, yes, but that's also the benefit of having 13 data centers around the globe. Do you have data centers in Canada? Yes. Wow, great. Yes, sir. Do you support the Amazon Fire Phone? Working on it. Not yet. That's a, it's, it's a basic, uh, you know, demand and supply and demand in the market. Question in the back? China? No, not yet. At the same time, so let me, let me given all those two questions, while we have physical footprints in the in a defined set of areas, we actually have what I'll call a departmental or a tabletop solution that we actually use for location testing. So for example, one of our customers needed to be able to be in both uh, Sochi and Rio, as an example. And we were able to uh, work against that requirement. It's not about us, it's about what your requirements are. And we believe in what's called a hybrid approach. And therefore, that's what we do to, to essentially match those use cases, be that a temporary situation or a situation where we don't have a, an actual lab. So what we have on the screen here is, is our UI. And imagine it's real devices that are, brow that are fingertip access via your, by your, through your browser. That's what you're looking at. And everybody asks, because we put it up on a browser like this, they ask the question, is it a real device? Is that really a real device? So what you can see here, I just call to the device. So if you have a problem, if you have an issue, this is my phone number. You can call it whenever you want. But this is actually a real device. You can see it. And I can control the device. And I can do whatever I want on these devices. So actually, if I have a device, if I want to work with the devices, I have the device in the cloud. All I need to do is to select the device from my environment. Just cancel it. So this is the cloud itself. We allow you to do a lot of things of the cloud. You can control the devices, but because we are uh, automation mechanism, we have another widget that help you to work with the device. So you can upload and install the application. You can get report from the cloud. You can get some vitals on the device itself. If you want to understand how your application affect the device CPU, you can get the uh, vitals on the device while you execute any automation script. So we spoke a little bit about automation, and you can see there is a small tab for the automation. So we have our own automation tools. But what I told you before was that, hey, we are supporting everything. So what I want you to see now, let's close that device. And what I'm doing right now, I bring my Eclipse environment. In the Eclipse in, in environment, I'm writing my code. It can be Selenium, it can be Appium, it can be Calabash, whatever you want. And we have our own add-in to the device itself. So let's open the same device I just worked before. Let's make some room. And what I want to do is actually to execute script on the device. And this is a very nice script. 
you will see it in a second, that run through the device. What we are doing here, and this is a Selenium script, I would like to check the uh, Jenkins application. I just got it yesterday, so I downloaded it. I open it. In this moment, I'm going to look and validate that. Everything is work. Press on the speakers. There is all the buttons there. And here are all the speakers, but I want to find myself. So I'm looking for Uzi, and you can see. My name is there. And I press the Uzi here. So what I did actually here, I actually autom execute automation, and now I have my validation. I would like to validate that everything that I'm looking for is actually appear on the screen. So we have two types of validation. First of all, first of all, validation based on the object. I can get all the details from the object. What is the text, what is the screen, the location on the screen, and other properties. So that's a good thing to validate. But we also have a visual validation. I can validate that the text that I'm looking for, the image I'm looking for, appear on the screen. What you see is what you get. And in my script, you will be able to see two types of web drivers. I have my web drivers. This is the standard web drivers. Uh, this is the uh, Selenium web driver. And I have a visual, which is extended to Perfecto Mobile, which allowed you to create more validation. So, what I did here, I just open a new web driver, change the web drivers that I use today, connect it to the cloud, and use my existing script. Questions? Yes, please. Sometimes there are great questions because it's bring me to the next step. So what we are doing, we are talking about the test. When we execute the test, we need to see the results. So our results, I'll open the results here right now. So this is the Perfecto Mobile uh, report. You can see here that I have all the execution. I have the screenshots of the test. And you ask about the video, so the answer is, of course, we do have the video as part of this report. And if I'll open it, we will see what happened during the execution. So yes, we have the videos. We'll pay you later for that question. Now, what I want to talk now, I just want to have one small uh, conversation with you about the devices. Let's think a little bit about the devices that we would like to work with. So, I can work with static devices. But remember, this market change all the time. If my devices, my basic devices for the smoke test are iOS 6 or, uh, and, um, I don't know, Android 4.2, and then Android L is released to the market, and iOS 8 released to the market, I need to change my devices. So I can have my static uh, list. I can change it once in a while. But I can give you another idea. And this is the idea that we uh, like to do. And this is the things that we like to do. This is a very simple script. But what it does, it actually go to uh, developer Android and get all the latest versions of the iOS and build an automation list. So right now, I have my automated list as part of my build process. And I will be able to decide that because I'm executing only smoke test and I need only two devices, I must to use the jelly bean and I must to use uh, 402 and 403 because this is the most uh, common devices in the market. So in this case, you will be able to keep a dynamic list of devices. And the, the uh, resource or the source for these devices can be different. You can take it from the marketing, you can take it from your customer, whatever you want. But you have to remember, this devices list, the devices that you are using must to keep up with the market. The last thing that I want to show you today is actually the integration with Jenkins. In order to do that, 
I would like to talk a little bit about web and native application. For native application, if you are implementing a native application for mobile devices, you have the deployment part. You need to take the APK file. You need to take the IPA file, upload it, install it on the devices. I saw few customers that did this process manually and then execute automation. So they build an automation process based on manual action, which makes no sense at all. So what we are doing, we allow you the options to take the APK file, IPA file, and I have a very important comment is, we are not instrumented the application. We are not changing the code. And we take the APK file, we take the IPA file, upload it to the cloud, install it on all the devices, and now we can start our process. Now we have the option to start our build. So when I hit the build process, it's first, build the application, second, upload the application to the cloud, deploy it on all the devices, and run the automation test. Full process, fully automation. About web, and this is another something that we are seeing in the market, another trend, more and more responsive web design uh, pages or sites appear in the market, which means that you're writing the same code for your browser and for your mobile. And in this case, what you want to do is actually to set, to uh, keep one set of tests. And you would like to execute the, te the same test on mobile and on the web. Remember, the page itself, it's the same. The objects are the same. So you want to have one set of script. So what I have here for you, I'm just going to uh, run a build. And this, this build going to, uh, it's tech test the web. So what I'm going to do right now, I'll go to Perfecto Mobile in this page, and we'll show you what happened on the devices. So I hit run build, the build upload, uh, build my application. In this case, it's a web application. It's a United application. And I started to run the test on all of these devices. So what happened right now, all of my devices start to execute the test that I just built. So you can see the same test run on all the devices. So it can be iOS devices or Android devices or tablet. And the test itself is go to uh, United and look for a specific flight. So I have one script, yes. Yes. Blackberry, Black, today, uh, Black, without BlackBerry 10, BlackBerry 10 will be released in end of the year, December. So the answer is yes, and uh, let me guess you are from Canada. <laughs> so I just want to return to Jenkins and to tell you what, what we saw. So I execute my script, and I execute the test, but the most important thing is to understand what happened during my execution. And in order to do that, I actually use the test ng in this example, the test ng adding. I'm going to see how many uh, test pass, what happened with my process. And by going to this table, you will be able to see that I'm executing, I executed nine tests, all the tests passed, and and this is the most important thing. Remember the Perfecto Mobile reports? So the reports are so important in this case because this script's going to run during the night. You are not going to monitor the script. And in case of error, you would like to understand what happened. So the easiest thing to do is just to click here from Jenkins and get the report, the same report that we saw earlier in Jenkins, and this is the test that just run. So what I did, I took a test, executed on real devices in the cloud, got all the results to my Jenkins, and have one centralized uh, dashboard that I can understand what is my build status. And I can run, decide go no go to my version. 
So I just want to uh, summarize what we saw today. I'll do it with the last slide. So why continuous quality labs? First of all, real devices. First of all, real devices. We have real devices, very important. We are not going to use emulator. I think we all agreed. Open API, you can keep to work with your internal processes. The tool will not change your culture or your processes or everything that you already built. Device availability, that's, that's critical. If device actually crashed on the cloud, you always have other device to use. So your automation script will continue to run and your build will never fail because of device availability. And the last thing that I think is very important, rich report embedded to your Jenkins. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much.